That bastard Brian Ray, mate. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Next on Rugby Wrap Up, making sense of all the Major League Rugby madness with Brian Ray, Matt McCarthy, and head coach Nate Osborne of the NOLA Gold. Rugby Wrap Up brought to you in part by The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pub, the Murphy Kennedy Group, founded with the idea that construction can be done better, and Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hey everybody, welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy in New York City and Brian Ray in Halifax, Nova Scotia. That's Canada, for the folks at home that don't know that. Uh, and we are talking Major League Rugby. Brian, let's just briefly, very briefly recap the four matches from last week because we have a special guest on the horn. Uh, it's not a mystery guest, but we'll tell you in a second who it is as soon as he's coming in. So stunning, stunning results this weekend. Let's, let's start, however, with... San Diego and Seattle. Very, very briefly, Brian, what was your take on that one? Yeah, we, I thought this was going to be close. In fact, I called Seattle winning. Well, you know, they just got too many penalties in that first half. Two yellow cards, four, four minutes apart, and that was it by halftime. 31 points for San Diego. I mean, there's no coming back from that. That's pretty much it. Yeah, I guess you could say the consolation is that Seattle won the second half, right? Yeah, they did all right in that second half better, but, you know, what difference does that make when you're 31, you know, 31 points and a half? Sure, you win a second half, but at the end of the day, no, that's a clear win for San Diego. Good for them. Well, I know that you're biased against Seattle because they're just on your border, but I would say that that for Seattle Seawolves fans shows that this team never quits. Go Seawolves. The next one up was an absolute stunner, numbing game if you're a New York fan. New England, tip of the cap with their coach that's departing, and Ryan Martin held serve and held New York to six points in not the most beautiful day of the year. Yeah, terrible weather. Game was, you know, delayed by over an hour before kickoff. And when it got going, it was just, you know, not the prettiest thing to watch. But, hey, Bowden Waka, a couple moments of genius. Those kicks in behind plays perfectly. Got it done. A pretty bad quick line out play that was disastrous for New York. And uh, that was all she wrote. There was nothing left in the second half. Yeah, New England, you just got to credit them. They just play, they just grinded that one out. That was not the prettiest rugby, but a win's a win, and a loss is a loss. And now New York is in a situation where they have to win those final two games. Then you had your arrows piercing the heart of America, old glory, tearing old glory apart on Independence Day, for God's sakes, Brian. Uh well, I think you got to give a little bit of credit to Old Glory. It's four tries apiece, so it wasn't like it was a blowout or anything. Uh, a bit of inspiration from this guy over my shoulder here, Andrew Ferguson. Absolute one of the tries of the year. Sensational score. I thought he had a brilliant game, so uh, credit to him. Taylor Adams also outstanding. Uh, you know, a few minutes there where the arrows looked like the arrows we thought they were going to be again. You know, three tries in about ten minutes, so uh, great for them to end that losing streak. Uh, unfortunate for Old Glory, but uh, it, I have to say it's just an exciting entertaining game and uh, kudos to both teams for for showing up and giving that one to the fans on july the 4th particularly with the loss of players that both sides and i'm not trying to say dc was missing as many players as the arrows certainly but they had some key individuals out and i picked old glory on independence day and i don't regret it so but the next one the final match wait wait, wait a minute wait a minute we don't need to talk about the next one the two of us, because we have somebody that was there. Oh, this is gold, Jerry, gold. It's Osborne's office. We'll walk through the, the locker room. Oh, the boys are in the shower, so we won't show that. Oh. Yeah. Jagger. Yeah. <laughs> Just going down to Fitz's office. Uh, Nate, welcome to the show. Thanks, mate. Matty, it's good to be on, mate. I've been uh, texting you often this year, and uh, <laughs> it's been good to uh, come on the show. Let's just get right to the to the nitty gritty here. Uh, Brian Ray was spreading rumors with America's Rugby News about your departure, your imminent departure, getting fired yep. and replaced by some French guy that he didn't was. speak English. And uh, lo and behold, your team has been on a tear since. Uh, I got to say, we need new hosts for this show, spreading rumors <laughs> that I'm spreading rumors. I'm getting the short end of the stick. I'm here every week. I'm, this is the way you treat me. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, it's all for ratings. It's sweeps week. So, uh, but Nate, were you hurt by Mr. Ray's uh, fake rumors that I spread? Uh, uh, mate, I wasn't hurt. I, we did use it as uh, 
we have it up in the locker room a lot. We have uh, pictures of him up in the locker room and, and all that sort of stuff to just give us motivation of, you know, this is what people think of us. You know, they got to bring in a, a different coach because you guys don't, don't respond. And so we responded. It's been great. Thanks, Brian, for that. I'll happily take the credit for the win over the Guiltinis. <laughs> Locker room <laughs> fodder for the NOLA gold, Brian Ray of America's Rugby News. Only on Rugby Wrap-Up, ladies and gentlemen. But in all seriousness, Nate, how the Sam Hill, and that's an old-school baseball reference for you foreigners out there, how in the Sam Hill did you guys go to Los Angeles, to the Coliseum, and not get slaughtered? Half of your team, three-quarters of your team from the beginning of the season is gone. Yeah. Uh, mate, we're, honestly, it was never in doubt for us. Honestly, we had a plan of how we we're going to beat them, and we stuck to it. And at half time, like I even sent a text to my wife saying we got them. Like I honestly believe that we we're going to win that game, and it was all about next man up for us. And it's all about the excitement that the the guys that have been here since, like we had guys like Geo Lap who's been here for three years, and that's his first game that he's got an opportunity. You know, uh, Junior Tongawe has been here for two, and that's his first opportunity. So it's all about those guys being here day in, day out, doing as much as the other guys do and not getting an opportunity. And then when they got their opportunity, they took it. And I, I knew they would. And it's, it was an amazing victory. And super proud of those boys for, for aiming up. But honestly, we, we had a plan and we stuck to it. What was the plan? We got to bottle that and sell it <laughs> in supermarkets because as corny as this sounds in perspective, this was like the U.S. 1980 Olympic team beating the Russians for the Olympic yeah. gold medal. Uh, well, they did. It, what, that wasn't the gold medal game. The, that was against Finland or sure. Sweden or one of those Brian Ray countries up there. But you know yeah. what I'm saying? No, I do. I understand. And, and I, uh, I understand what everyone on the outside was saying about it. But uh, internally, we, we fully believed that we had like such a great week of training and great week of prep and um, we understood what we needed to do and everyone went out there and executed it. And we had guys like, um, you know, you got like Kevin Sullivan and Brian Nolte up front who, you know, are going to a great young rugby players. They're just behind Dino and Harmon right now who are with the Eagles. So, I mean, we're, we're the only team who has like, you know, fully American front row and we've had the best scrum percentage in the last two years. So um, I believe I should be the Eagle scrum coach, even though I don't even know how it works. <laughs> fair play it's all about uh mates not teammates for me it's about that we're mates in this room we're not teammates you know everyone can have a teammate everyone can have a start a darts league and have a teammate uh but we we believe that we're mates we believe we're on and off the field we're really close and we're going to fight for each other and uh when the game's on the line i, I believe that those boys were going to stand up and, and we we did a job so what about the laundry laundry list of injuries and players that we're supposed to be on the team that aren't on the team. Yeah, sure. Let's go through the list. I mean, you know, before the season, we had Scott Gale and Con Foley, the, you know, outstanding Australians last year, uh, you know, who went back to Australia, unfortunately. And then, it, so you had quitters, Carmen. the quitters, yeah. the Benedict <laughs> Arnold's. Oh, a little COVID. They're going to regret it. And then you had, uh, you know, Nick Fix and JP Eloff getting hurt uh, down at the tens and they missed the whole season. Uh, you had Harmon, Howard, Waldron, Bursich, Dottie, uh, Guerra, Dolan, Kratz, all on the uh, internationals. You had Bailey, I guess, you know, traveling, injured, whatever you know, call him. He wasn't there. Uh, Julian Dominguez didn't play in this one. Robbie Coleman, he blew out his knee. Uh, Devin Short suspended. I mean, that's a ridiculous lineup. You put those guys together. Did Tim Falcon play up front for you against L.A.? <laughs> He was close. He was close. <laughs> he could. I mean, yeah. he could get out there and give you 15, 20 solid. I would imagine. Yeah, this one, this one wasn't too bad because we, we knew going in, we were going to be missing everyone. So we, we had a time to prepare everyone. It was the DC one that I think was probably the most amazing win from us. We had uh, Timmy Gilman pull out pregame and then Pat O'Toole couldn't get out of bed sick. Uh, so then Kane Thompson put on the no number and taped his head up and all the players are looking around, looking at him who haven't seen him play before, even though he's an unbelievable player. Well, he's an ass. Just looking at going, we're not, we're not actually doing this. We're not actually playing our assistant coach. <laughs> like they didn't think he could play. And he got on there and had six minutes of fury. He was probably the best player on the field for six yeah. minutes. Uh, and then in the pregame, Monty Tongawe hurt his shoulder and uh, Juan Capolero hurt his groin. Uh, and I started stretching on the sideline. I was like, oh, mate, I'm going to have to go on here. 
gonna have to be me. I'm gonna, and I was telling the boys, I'm gonna just get a red card. I can't, I can't, if I don't get a red card in the first minute, we're in trouble. I, I got to go back to uh, this halftime situation here. I mean, it's 14 to three uh, line outs, not going well. Kane Thompson's off in the first, I think it went off for 15 minutes or something like that. Uh, and you know, lazy and, Kane Thompson went off in the first 15 minutes. And, and you're here saying, uh, you know, all right, boys, we got him right where we want him. I mean, what the hell are we missing that, that you had? Was this something you saw like uh, on their team or was it just a psychological thing that you got that you figured that uh, yeah, they you know, think you Nate is nuts. So they just are scared not to listen to him. Yeah, it, it's uh, it, it was a, a bit of both. It was something that I saw and I saw what we were doing compared to them. And I knew we were going to wear them down. I, just, I, I believe we're just more physical than most teams. Uh, and I think that that's what, you know, why at the end of games, teams start to drop off and I feel like our fitness is a lot better. And, and we, we kind of live for that a little bit. We live, we live for being the underdogs and we live for that like physically, you know, battle, you know, and every game we play, um, <clears throat> we just frustrate teams. Like by the end of the game, they want to fight us, you know, and it's not that we're doing anything dirty. It's just that we're just tough. You know, I think we're just more physical and I could see them wearing down uh, and I could see, in our guys' eyes, how much we wanted it. And I think even though it was only three points at the end of that half, I think it gave us that confidence that, okay, we're going to go on here. We're going to win this. And we all believed it. We all believe we're going to win. Go ahead, you Brian. went to uh, California the last time you were there in May, you played uh, San Diego. And I mean, let's be honest, it was a blowout win for, for the Legion. Uh, yeah. You guys didn't look good. And, that, and it was a pretty strong NOLA lineup. So what was the difference this time going down from then? Was it something you learned from that game? Was something in the buildup or, you know, what was the difference? Yeah, it, it's something, I think that was like kind of a turning point for us. Um, I thought when Austin beat us on the bell, uh, with that cross field kick where we had a, a scrum on, on the 80 and we, we threw the ball away. Um, I thought that would have been a lesson for us, but it wasn't. And the one against San Diego, if you look at what we've done since San Diego, we've only lost that one game uh, and it was against Atlanta where we got that bad call for the offside, 8-7. Uh, Otherwise, you know, we've, we've really changed our mentality of, of who we are. Um, I think thought it was a good loss for us to take, caught one on the chin. Uh, but if you look at the stats, we were on their one, like 10 times, you know, like we, we, we were a thousand meters carried to their 300. To hell with the San Diego match. Let's get back to the present. <laughs> you guys can't win on the road. You cannot win on the road. That's been the, the Nola golf thing here. And all you've done is win on the road in the second Absolutely. half of the season. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I don't, something's fishy. Something's road, really road fishy. Warrior. Mate, honestly, for us, this is a this is a weird thing to say, but we got a lot of guys like a new some new guys and guys that you know come come over from all over the world to experience America. Uh, they played their first twelve weeks. Ten of them or eight of them were here, or all preseason, and then eight of the first ten games were here. So they didn't really experience anything. So when we go to these places like DC, uh, New England, LA, you know they get to get out, they get to experience it, they get to like everyone's just in such a good mood that they're like away from home actually that we're getting to see new things and, and experience new things uh that i think it like kind of gives us more energy on the road uh so i know when people were writing us off and saying that you know we can't win on the road i was in the back of my mind thinking i think it's going to be a good thing for us and I, it's also that <clears throat> breaks the routine up you know like we you know we train from eight to two every day you come to the stadium you do it then you come to the stadium and play you got everything's here for you it's a great great setup but after a while it just becomes my alarms and my alarms, I get up and I do this. Then all of a sudden it mixes it up and you get to go on the road. You get to hang out with the boys. Uh, you get to be in a, bit, a little bit of a different environment. And I think that uh, that's what LA Coliseum about. is a bit of a different environment. I'll say, amazing. you know, like all that stuff is amazing for us, you know, and to see those things and for these, to see, uh, see the young guys eyes when they run out in those sort of experiences, like that's what life's about, like experience different things. And um you know, we had some amazing crowds here. We and the games uh, we had here were amazing with the crowds and the the atmosphere that was here. And we'd love another home game. It's down to the wire here. We know pretty much whatever happens next week, it's going to be down to that New York game in the final. Uh, you said, you know, the the uh, bonus points, whatever, will take care of themselves. But I mean, you did kick points, uh, you know, against LA. So uh, going into Seattle, is it now, you know, knowing that those bonus points could be crucial, um, you know, or is it now just go for the tries, try and get that extra bonus point uh, next week? Does it change your approach at all into next game? Or is it just let's go in and get the win and 
let the chips fall where they may at the end. Uh, mate, honestly, for me, I, I think we need to just keep playing all the way we're playing. So it is, it's about winning, you know, and I think, um, the bonus points will, will happen. And, you know, like the last couple of years, we've missed playoffs because of it. Like we missed uh, the playoffs by one or two points both years. Um, but I, I believe if we win this week and we win next week, we're in, you know, it doesn't matter about bonus points. It doesn't matter about anything else. Uh, I don't care if we win three nil in an 80 minute field goal. If we win both games, we're in. So you would think, um, right. Who do you think's coming out of the West? I think it'll be LA and, and uh, Utah. I feel a bit sorry for Utah because uh, they get Atlanta without uh, Mikey Teo and Michael Basker. And yeah, they're missing a lot of guys. Losing, you know, they're missing a lot of guys as well. Uh, and they're missing guys that, you know, are their firepower as well, you know? And I think that uh, uh, them playing Atlanta at that point might, might hurt them a little bit, but I know that um, by us beating LA, uh, that kind of put a bit of pressure back on LA because I know they want to be the one seed. So I think that they're going to go down firing against uh, Austin. Uh, and I think that might might hurt Austin a little bit. So I, I do think that Utah will come out of there. And I actually think they're the, probably the most dangerous team. Once uh, Nola beats New York in that game, what are you going to make McCarthy wear in the show? <laughs> I'd wear my Nola, my Nola gold kit, but I never got any. Yeah, that's true. I'll definitely I'll bring some for you, Maddie, for the uh, New York game, so you can wear it on the game. I'm, I'm scheduled maybe, yeah, to be maybe. doing the call of that game. By the way, love it. I'd like you to wear a um, Devon short wig on the on the show, mate. Done. <laughs> Done. All right. Thank you, Nate. We appreciate you coming on, Mr. Nate Osborne, the head coach of the Nola Gold. Uh, but on that note, we have to take a quick break, and we'll be back with previews of this next exciting Major League Rugby round. Don't go away. If you're in New York City and want to watch some great rugby, have some great food, and some great times, go to the world's best rugby pub, The Pig and Whistle on West 36th Street. I've been blind since I was four, and I've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label. None of that stuff influences me. I drink beer because of the taste. And my beer is Paps Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. What do you think's on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. City Brian Ray up in Nova Scotia. Brian, an exciting, exciting finish to this MLR season. We got two weeks left, two mat, two game, two weeks of stellar matches and a tight playoff races. And the first one up next week is a must-win for New York versus Houston. Yeah, after that uh, debacle against uh, New England, we'll call it uh, New York. Really, their backs against the wall now. They're actually under Nola in the standings right now, so they have to get this win even though they're level on points you know the tiebreaker is, is towards nola at the moment so they have to get points out of this one houston hasn't won since april you got to pick new york at home well you know what you had a red white and blue team playing at, out of boston so some of us should have thought about that on independence day i think we all kind of blanked on that you you in particular because you're from the 51st state and you are especially ticked off <laughs> at massachusetts uh yeah, I think New York is going to win this one. I like, you know, I think the Sabercats have some fight in them, some bite, but New York's got to come out on all cylinders at home and probably win easily, I think. Well, not easily on the pitch, but in the score. Uh, San Diego going into Old Glory. This is an interesting one. This really is an interesting one. Even though, you know, they're both out of the playoffs, it's a it's an interesting style matchup they both like to play attacking rugby i thought those young american guys i've been talking about them all season uh, noble and kusan on the wing played well against uh, the arrows so you know what I, I it's a bit of a trek for san diego to get over there i kind of like old glory's chances at home i got to go back to san diego because i've picked them out to come out of the west they lost some key matches uh i think their losses for team usa and the other 
na- the other nation's teams aren't as great as the impact of the guys that DC lost at key positions. So I think this is going to be a squeaker, a lot of points scored, but I think San Diego might edge them in this one, but it's going to be an exciting match. Your arrows hosting the new England free jacks in Atlanta, Ontario. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm obviously going to take the arrows in this one, uh, but you know, it's a good, I'm going to concede it's a good close game. Uh, free jacks really stepped up in that game against uh, New York. So this is a tough one, but uh, I liked the, how the uh, arrows rebounded after those five straight losses that came back. They got the win when they needed it. I think they will be just a little bit better after another week together with those few new guys. So I'm going to take the arrows in a very close match. Well, you got Ferguson who had an exceptional match. And then you also have, Malcolm back in the mix and you got Montero back in the mix. So I think that Toronto is going to fire on all cylinders. The arrow is going to shoot straight. And I think they're going to edge the on the road free jacks by about six points. Call me crazy. Then we've got the Nola gold going to Seattle and every win is a must win for some teams. This is one for Nola and Starfire is no easy place to play. No, it's really not, uh, you know, and in, in, in Seattle, they've been on the improvement, uh, you know, that you're right. I, I should give them more credit for that second half performance against San Diego. They've been looking too late every week. Too late. <laughs> too late. Tony Ridnell is already on his way to your house. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, you know, they are a tough team and Nola is going to have the work cut out for them, but how can you not back Nola after that performance against LA? I don't even care if they lose three more guys during the week. I'm going to pick the gold in this one uh, to win this game. And it's going to be everything to play for against New York in the final round. All right. Well, I'm going to save these last two matches I kind of put toward the end here. You've got the Austin Gilgronis going into the Coliseum against the Giltinis who have to be wondering what the flock happened after they lost to Nola and Jimmy bag of donuts and Johnny bamboo playing in the front row or, you know, or all over the, the Nola lineup. Right. It was like, Hey, uh, Hey, doing I'll play. That's my new Orleans accent, by the way, but who's going to win this one, Brian? The Gilchrist Bowl again. Is it, uh, man, I, I think all those conspiracy theorists out there who thought that LA were going to throw this to get LA into the playoffs. Well, that's, or, or Austin in the playoffs. That's out the window now. Yeah. I mean, LA lost, so they absolutely have to win. I can't see them losing this one at home. Uh, you know, these guys are going to be whipped during the week to get their heads into this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take LA in this one, but, uh, you know, Austin's going to make a battle of it. Then the last one, another key pivotal match for an Eastern Conference team and a Western Conference team, both in the in the heat of it, and both desperately need this win. Atlanta traveling all the way to Utah and that altitude, but it's a threadbare Utah team. Can the can the mountains and the altitude get the Utah Warriors enough to win? Jeez, this is a tough one. You're right. That travel is, uh, you know, something that's, uh, you know, that's going to take an, an effect on ATL, but I just feel like they're so well prepared this year. And you're right, you know, missing Mikey Teo and Mika Cruz, especially that takes so much uh, X factor out of that back line. So, ah, man, this is such a tough call. This is, and, and here's another one. Maybe this is a final. I mean, both these teams could make uh, the, Absolutely. you know, the conference finalists could be a preview of the, of the big show. So who knows, but this is a, a huge matchup. Can't wait to watch it. Uh, I'm going to go with ATL on the road by like three. I can't go with Utah because Sean Pittman was on the show last week. So I'm going with Utah and that's, that's that. Okay. That's that. That's the rugby wrap up bump. Okay. I'm sorry, Atlanta, but I gotta, I gotta be a little loyal here. So I'm going with Utah in a Steve Lewis squeaky bum type win by like two or three points in a thriller. Final thoughts, Brian. We keep saying this every week. Can't wait for this next round of games. But this, I mean, this weekend is just colossal. Some of these games, now that the races are so tight, that win from Nola just set everything, you know, went from nine and a half to 11 out of 10. Everything is just on fire. Yeah, so. Nola's going to fade. They're going <laughs> to the road. They can't win on the road. It's over for them. They needed to win that 8 7 <sighs> game against Atlanta at home, you know, blah, 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 blah. And look what they've done. Uh, yeah, they, they made us pundits look like amateurs that we are. So <laughs> we'll take it. Looking forward to the weekend. Uh, yeah. And good luck to everybody. And by the way, Nate, I am picking you guys and your gold against Seattle because you were on the show as well. So I told him I wouldn't pick them because I'd mush them. Uh, 
That's it, man. I'm with you. A, a unbelievable season. I'm already getting bummed that it's almost over. Right. You know, who thought it was going to happen? And now it's, you know, it seemed like it was, you know, we'd have it for forever. And now it's it's at the end. It's crazy. Unbelievable, but exciting. And just what we needed on the American landscape. Thank you, Brian Ray, for coming in. America's News. I'm Matt McCarthy for Mr. Ray on Rugby Wrap-Up. Thank you for tuning in. And ladies and gentlemen, come back next week. But in the meantime, check out our other segments, including The Rugby Odds, featuring WWE Hall of Famer John Bradshaw Layfield, the world's best sports better ever in the Philly Godfather, and Rugby's Gift, Gift A. Bailu, our Major League Rugby show, Martial Law, The Zack Attack, and please sign up for our Rugby Wrap-Up Red Cross Blood Donor Team.